In this lecture, we're going to discuss the extraction of iron. Now, iron is over here and it is generally what we discussed earlier when we were, when we were broadly discussing the extraction of metals is that it, it generally is not found uncombined. It's always in the form of ores where it would be combined with other elements and there would be a lot of impurities in it. So there would be rocks that would be mined. So some of the ores that, uh, that, that uh, contain iron are one is uh, magnetite. So magnetite has this iron compound in it. It has Fe3O4 in it. And there's also another uh, iron ore which is called hematite, which contains Fe2O3. So these are your two uh, popular iron ores that are frequently used and iron is, is extracted from these ores. Now what we discussed earlier was that if you look at uh, carbon over here, now carbon is very cheaply available and carbon is more reactive than iron. So since carbon is more reactive compared to iron, so it's going to displace iron from its compound. So what we just need to do is that we need to react carbon with Fe2O3. Let's take hematite. So we just need to react it with Fe2O3 and what carbon would do is that it's going to take away all the oxygen, it's going to form carbon dioxide and Fe would become uncombined iron as a metal would be formed and you just need to balance this equation so you would balance it and you will get your iron in this way. So this method was called uh, reduction with carbon. Now, there are, there are a lot of problems associated with this entire method of extracting iron. One is that the iron ore has a lot of impurities. Some of the impurities that it has, it's not just pure magnetite or hematite. Uh, it doesn't contain only Fe2O3 or Fe3O4. It's, it contains a lot of other impurities. One is that it has a lot of sand in it, SiO2. It has uh, sulfur in it. It has phosphorus in it. So it has a lot of uncombined... Uh, a lot of impurities that are mixed with this ore and you need to you need to purify the ore and you need to get rid of the impurities and that's the only way you're going to get iron so so we've broadly discussed how iron would be produced you're going to re reduce the ore of iron by reacting it with carbon so now we're going to discuss the entire process by which uh, this uh, method is carried out in industry this in front of you is a blast furnace which is used to uh, extract iron from its ore. So, so the three things uh, added to this blast furnace. The number one thing is hematite. You add iron ore which contains Fe2O3. Then you add carbon to it and the industrial name for carbon is coke. So you add mix it with coke. And the third thing that you add is called limestone which is also the formula of limestone is CaCO3 that is also added and i'm going to tell you uh, the purpose of each of them in a while now the first thing in uh, the blast furnace is designed in a way that uh, hot air is blasted through the bottom and you're going to collect iron at the end right at the bottom as well so what's the purpose of blasting hot air and the temperatures in a blast furnace generally tend to be very very high which is going to melt the raw material that you're adding over here so the first thing is, what's the purpose of the of hot air blast? The purpose of the hot air blast is to produce is to produce heat. And the way heat is produced is that there's a lot of carbon being added. So you can see at the top you you're adding coke to the mixture. So there's a lot of carbon. So what you do is you start burning some of the carbon. When carbon burns, carbon reacts with oxygen and produces CO2. This combustion reaction produces a lot of heat. So that is the reason why the blast furnace has a very high temperature and you need a constant, you need a constant supply of oxygen which is provided by the blast of hot air at the bottom. So the first thing, uh, the first purpose of carbon or coke that you're adding is that coke is, is uh, burnt and when it burns it produces a lot of carbon dioxide. But since coke is in such, um, such a high quantity that the carbon dioxide formed would end up reacting eventually with the carbon back again and it's also going to produce some carbon monoxide 
as well. So at the bottom, there's a lot of combustion going on. Carbon dioxide is being produced and also carbon monoxide is also being produced at the same time. And the main purpose of the blast of water is to produce a lot of heat to, to melt the mixture. Now once the mixture melts and the raw materials are in molten form, they would start reacting with each other. And the first reaction, the first reaction is that uh, iron oxide or hematite would be reduced. So carbon would come into contact with Fe2O3 and as it comes into contact with Fe2O3, as discussed earlier, carbon is more reactive than iron. Carbon is going to take away all the oxygen, it's going to reduce iron and iron, molten iron metal would be formed as a result and you need to balance this equation so this would be your balanced equation but but uh, as we've discussed previously as well that there's a lot of carbon monoxide being formed as well and carbon monoxide also needs a, an oxygen it's incompletely combusted it needs an oxygen as well so it's going to take it's going to uh, play its role as well it's going to reduce uh, iron oxide as well so carbon monoxide is going to get converted into carbon dioxide and iron would be produced as a result as well. So you need to balance uh, this equation. This would be three, then you have three CO2s and you would have two iron. So this is your balance equation. The only thing to remember that is different is that not only carbon uh, is reducing Fe2O3, carbon monoxide is also playing its role. It's also taking away oxygens from Fe2O3 and converting it into iron. So so uh, iron ore is reduced by carbon as well as carbon di carbon monoxide the last step in the entire process is the removing of uh, impurities now the way impurities are removed uh, limestone is added specifically to remove those impurities so what limestone does initially is that limestone because of the high temperatures calcium carbonate is added and that calcium carbonate, uh, due to the high temperatures, it decomposes and ends up forming CaO plus carbon dioxide. And when it decomposes, it produces calcium oxide, which is a basic oxide. It's a metal, ox metal oxides, which are bases. And because uh, the iron ore contained a lot of sand, SiO2, that was the main impurity. Now sand is has slight is slightly acidic. So due to the high temperatures, sand would end up reacting with calcium oxide and it would end up forming calcium silicate, which is CASI O3, and this is called calcium silicate, which is also known by another name which is called slag. And slag has has very low density, so it floats on top of the iron. So at the bottom, as you as iron is produced, you can see this slag floating on top of it. So molten slag is removed and it is skimmed off the surface. You get molten iron and on the top layer there would be slag. So the slag is simply removed. So that is how you end up removing one of the impurities which is uh, which is sand. So sand is one of the chief impurities which is, which is removed uh, by the reaction of calcium carbonate or calcium oxide. Now in exactly the same, in a similar fashion, impurities like sulfur and phosphorus are also removed in a similar way. What happens is that since you're, you're blasting uh, hot air which contains a lot of oxygen, the, these sulfur and phosphorus elements, they end up combining with oxygen and they produce uh, oxides like sulfur dioxide or phosphorus would end up reacting with oxygen and it would produce uh, phosphorus 5 oxide so these oxides we need to balance this equation so there would be four phosphoruses so these oxides over here they would also react with calcium oxide these are acidic oxides they would also end up reacting with the calcium oxide so a similar reaction would happen calcium oxide would end up reacting with uh, sulfur dioxide to form calcium sulfite caso3 and calcium oxide would also react with phosphorus p4o10 and would end up and form calcium phosphate so in exactly the same way as silicon oxide is removed these oxides are also removed in the form of slag and they would also be become part of the slag so 
sulfur, phosphorus, silicon, silicon oxides. These are all oxidized to their oxides, which they which eventually end up reacting with the calcium oxide, which was obtained from the carbonate that we added initially. Now we can go over the entire process one more time. The first thing about the blast furnace was that hot air was blasted through the bottom of the blast furnace. This provided the much needed oxygen for the combustion of carbon. You are adding a lot of uh, carbon or coke into this blast furnace. So this coke, this carbon would burn and it's going to produce a lot of carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide would eventually react with, because there is a lot of carbon, it's going to react with some of the carbon and it's also going to produce carbon monoxide. So there would be some incomplete combustion as well. So that's the process that produces a lot of heat. The main process of production of iron is the reduction with carbon. As the temperature rises and all these um, all these raw materials they melt and they react with start reacting with each other hematite would react with carbon so fe2o3 would react with carbon and since carbon is more reactive compared to iron carbon would displace iron and it's going to form carbon dioxide and iron would be produced as a result and the same is um, occurs with carbon monoxide as well because it needs oxygen as well so it reacts with fe2o3 and ends up producing iron as well. So this is the process where iron is produced in these two reactions. And the last process of extraction of iron was the removal of impurities where limestone played a key role. Now limestone with calcium carbonate, it decomposes, it produces calcium oxide, which is a basic oxide. And this basic oxide ends up reacting with all the acidic impurities that are present, one of which is sand. So sand or SiO2, reacts with calcium oxide ends up producing calcium silicate which is slag and slag floats on the surface of the molten iron and it could be skimmed off easily and the same exact case happens with sulfur and phosphorus they react with oxygen which is coming from the hot air blast and they end up reacting oxides which are acidic and these acidic oxides also react with the basic calcium oxide and end up forming calcium sulfide or calcium phosphate which is also part of the slag and can be simply skimmed off. The last thing that we need to discuss about extraction of iron is that the iron that you, you're going to get uh, from the blast furnace it still has one impurity because there would be a lot of carbon being added so, so the iron produced has a lot of excess carbon in it and carbon and iron, the mixture of carbon and iron, it's called it's called steel. So, so you're not going to get pure iron from this uh, method. What you're going to get is called steel. And you can adjust the amount of uh, carbon in the mixture by blowing more oxygen. So, if you blow more oxygen, if you want to reduce the, if you want to reduce the amount of carbon, the way to reduce the amount of carbon is by blowing. Uh, more air through the mixture so carbon would react with oxygen it would end up produce it would end up producing co2 which would escape so that is the only way you're going to get rid of uh, some of the carbon but the mixture would still contain carbon so it's going to be an alloy which is called steel the steel produced can be of different types uh, the more the higher the carbon content uh, the stronger would the steel be because as you add more impurities to a metal its strength it's uh, increases and its malleability and its softness would decrease so if you add more carbon to iron the steel would become stronger so th so there's a high carbon steel which is uh, a stronger type of steel it's uh, there are different names given to high carbon steel one it's called cast iron or wrought iron or peg iron it contains about 2.5 percent of carbon and it's very hard so it's used for cutting tools etc uh, similarly you have low carbon steel or it's also called mild steel it has uh, a smaller content of carbon so it's uh, comparatively softer and it's used in car bodies and then you have stainless steel stainless steel has uh, other elements added uh, like chromium and nickel and chromium and nickel they end up forming oxides on the surface which uh, makes the surface shiny and it becomes uh, resistant to corrosion so it won't corrode and they use in cutlery in making spoons surgical instruments etc so so there are different types of steels that could be extracted that could be further um, processed uh, to make different uh, different uh, different products